Welcome back to Start Talk. My name is Aaron Thomas, and this is some bonus footage from our previous episode where we're going to talk about installations. So Sean wrote, why don't technicians show up from start.ca to do installations? Okay. You were mentioning before that sometimes people might hear about this, a very small percentage of people might ask about this question. Um, but why is that the case that a start.ca technician doesn't, in general, go up to someone's house to make an install? So the way that... Um Basically, it comes down to the infrastructure owner. So whoever owns the wire going into the building, whether that's a copper wire, a coax wire, a fiber wire, um, whatever that uh, last mile infrastructure owner is, has the, uh, uh, well, has the ownership over that fiber, and it's their technicians that have to actually do the work on it. So when we have a service on cable, for example, if it's in Rogers territory, it's a Rogers technician uh, that will actually do the work. And sometimes they'll sub it out to a third party as well. So there might be a local company that's, that's doing their installations in a particular town. And in which case, our installations would be done by that same third party. Uh, or if it's in Kojiko territory, it's a Kojiko uh, technician or again, their third party. And the same goes with Bell in, in their uh, area. Where we have our own fiber, uh, those are start.ca vans, those are the bright green ones you can't miss, and we have 100% control over that uh, installation process because those are our employees, they work in the same building as we do, um, we manage the schedules, and it's uh, a very different process when you know we can control from the end to end. Where we, uh, where we lease uh, last mile circuits from other uh, competitors in order to provide access, uh, we're using their technicians. So that process goes through that ordering process. When we place an order, um, we have all of the information for when our customer is going to be there. We arrange that uh, um, order for them and we put that uh, into the order system of whichever vendor that we're, we're using to supply internet to that home and then they manage uh, the scheduling of their employees. So unfortunately, we don't have as much insight uh, to that process as we do for our own process. Now, that's something that we're working to change. Um, you know, so the CRTC is currently going through this working group process. It's called the, uh, I believe it's the quality of service um, process that's happening. And we're really trying to figure out, you know, what is a, what is a way to ensure that, you know, the uh, technicians that are going there are treating both retail and uh, competitor access in a fair and, and equal way. Uh, so that process is actually just kind of at the, the tail end and it's kind of wrapping up. Uh, I don't know if it'll be finished this year or early next year, uh, but that will help ensure that we have the same uh, access and time, time scales to technicians uh, on that third party access. that. They would. So sometimes, and I've heard from experience, I've seen you know a competitor come in and do an install, and they walk you through the whole modem router. Mm -hmm. You know, they work with you in doing a password. And then when I switched over to Start.ca, the technician came in, was very polite, mm -hmm. was great to work with, but they only made sure that the internet connection was working at the home. Right. So is that type of the limitations that we have right now? Um, yeah. So most uh, most vendors we work with. Um, they don't want to handle our equipment because it becomes a liability issue. What happens if that equipment gets broken? And, Makes sense. You know, and so there's there's concerns about that. So most of the equipment we have is very self serve, um, being able to self installation. You know, as if you can plug in the power and you can plug in, uh, you know, a, a TV cable into the back of your modem. Uh, you're up and running and of yeah. course we have our service desk team here that's amazing at being able to help uh, walk people through that um, but our end goal is uh, is to try to replicate as much of what we do on our own fiber plant uh, with our with our last mile uh, providers as well so one of the things that we're hoping will change in the future is for us to be able to um, work out some sort of certification agreement with the vendors where we can have our own technicians licensed to operate on that but that's something that would probably take a little while and but I mean that's the end goal where we would love to be. Wow. So a lot of stuff you learned right now about why a start.ca technician doesn't show up and why others do. Very interesting stuff. Well, and again, you know, I think it's just important to say, um, you know, it sounds like oh, start technicians don't don't install or don't show up. And again, you know, it's it is a really small percentage of installs that don't go as planned. And as we talked about in the uh, the original footage, and I'm not sure, you know, people might just be watching this video, um, but there's really a, a number of reasons why an installation might not happen uh, in terms of 
whether or not that uh, the customer uh, didn't hear the, the door knock, whether or not they were you know in the shower or you know might have scooted out to the to the variety store to grab something quick and you know just missed them, uh, to whether or not that technician might have uh, had a family uh, issue that had come up or an illness whether they may have been running late from the, the job before. So, you know, we're talking about a relatively small percentage yeah. of installs. The vast majority of installs go really, really well. And we have, you know, an amazing group of uh, in installation people out there that, you know, love their work and, you know, are, um, you know, courteous and, and, and oh, yes. prideful of the work and do a great job. Um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, life happens and, and things don't go as planned. I think there's, you know, an opportunity for us to, you know, um, continue to work on improving that process of what happens when a missed install happens uh, because obviously we know of you know the inconvenience that it causes and it's certainly not the experience that we want people to have it's their first opportunity to kind of experience um, being with start and so obviously it's a pretty rocky way to start but you know once we get past that and again in the small cases uh, where it's happened once we get past that you know hopefully we'll win back their confidence and show them what we're made of yeah and lots of times you can transfer an account over you know if it's if it's a cable account you can transfer there's no mm -hmm. need for a technician to mm -hmm. come out so Absolutely. there's lots of positive ways that you know that, that nothing and installation doesn't have to happen and yeah very true yeah and for transfers transfers uh, generally are a very smooth process nobody shows up uh, we're just able to coordinate everything on the back end and your service just starts to work with us um, and in some cases an installation tech has to come out. Oh, perfect. Well, that's been some extra footage today on Start Talk. And join us. And remember, always go to our social media platforms. You can get there on Facebook or on Twitter or visit our website, start.ca. You got to get there. You got to ask the questions. This is the back door to finding out all the things from a telecom. And we're going to answer every single question you possibly have. My name is Aaron Thomas. I'm the marketing director here at start.ca. And this is Peter Rocca, the CEO at start.ca. Thanks. Thank you.